Okay. Oh, we're on. Hi. Hello. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. I, I suspect that um, all the people that would have normally been here are probably at home, so Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We just played oh, gosh, for yes. King and Country's version of Drum, Little Drummer Boy. Little Drummer Boy. So, oh, you got it. You got it. You get it too, man. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, that's if you're old rockers anyway, but. Uh, how do I turn all this right? He doesn't hmm. know how to play his toy. Hmm. Does that one do anything? Yes. You forgot your hat. I did. Oh my gosh. How can we live without my hat? We can't live without your Christmas hat. Okay. Does that still play too or is the battery gone? Don't know. Forgot to check. Let me make sure people can see it. Okay. Yes. All right. Again. <laughs> yes, I know we're goofy. What can I say? You know, I was gonna say we. Uh, you know, in years past, we uh, let's see. At our other building, we had a biker gang, biker gang, come up the street. Uh, Except this great big window on, onto the street, and. Um, yeah, half a dozen. Pretty oh, hard. Were, pretty they, hard. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, they know they were bi they're bikers, um, and uh, outlaws, outlaw type stuff. And uh, they came up to the church. Who knows what kinds of oh, people? Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> I do. I do. And because um, what we've talked about in the past was, you know, what doesn't matter what you think about Jesus and everything. And I don't care if you think he's the Son of God or or whatever. You know, a lot of people do. But the bottom line is he was an awesome dude. I mean, he, he thought these wonderful thoughts, did these wonderful deeds, and that's all true. So all you got to do is be a little more like Jesus and probably be a much better world. But that. Um, we've had, uh, let's see, I came up uh, as Santa Claus a few times on a, on a bike in the same similar group over the years. Hans drove you actually I know, we, this room. We, we had a, a, a bike back there. Motorcycle. Tur turbocharged motorcycle. It was really cool. And revved it up, came all the way up. Yeah, yeah, I, and, and I got off. And so, yeah. So we've then done a lot of goofy things over angel, the years. He's been dressed as a wise man. Kind of wise ass. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it's, it's similar, that's, but different. Yeah. It's similar, but different. So. Okay, okay, but not this year. <laughs> Sure. That's okay. That's We're okay. To be here this year. Yes, we are lucky to be here this year. Okay, more T-shirts and sweatshirts that you may or may not want to have. Um, my passwords are protected by amnesia. Ain't that? I like that one. I like that one. So, um, when did my wild oats turn into shredded wheat? Hmm. Hmm. A little gray hair is a small price to pay for this much wisdom. Uh, retired, nothing to do, all day I d to do it. Nothing to do and all day to do it. All day to do it, yeah. I'm at that awkward age between life and death. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. Age is a number. Old age is an attitude. You've got that. I think that. I got that. I think I got that. Yep, you so. certainly did. Yeah, and you know, and over the years, we. do you want to do this one? Go ahead. No, go ahead. You do, you do that one. Okay, did you know the partridge in a pear tree is Jesus Christ? Two turtle doves of the Old and New Testaments. Three French hens stand for faith, hope, and love. The four calling birds are the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The five golden rings called the Torah or law, the first five books of the Old Testament. The six geese laying stand for the six days of creation. Seven swans a swimming represent the sevenfold gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
prophesy, serving, teaching, exhortation, contribution, leadership, and mercy. The eight maids of milking are eight beatitudes. Nine ladies dancing are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which, by the way, is uh, what uh, the healing code is based on. We did the healing code today in the trilogy. It was the second one we did with the focus thing. That's part of that. Uh, ten Lords of Leaping are the Ten Commandments. The Eleven Pipers Piping stand for Eleven Faithful Disciples. Twelve Drummers Drumming symbolize the Twelve Points of Belief in the Apostles' Creed. And so there's your history lesson for today. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, we, we do have a couple patron saints. I seem to John Lennon and George Carlin. What? I've lost yeah, my George. blessing. You she, lost your what? The blessing. What'd you do with it? I don't know. It might be in the office. I'll, I'll, we'll get it and okay. give you a little check. Yeah, because we, we went to all kinds of effort to, we went home to do that. Get it. Yeah, we <laughs> actually went home because we forgot it, and now we can't find it. Uh, <laughs> all right, our patron saints, John Lennon. He said, um, I know you say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you join us and the world will live as one. May it be so. And George Carlin, you know, there's a lot of people, you probably don't even know who John Lennon and George Carlin are. I know John Lennon, but I don't think they are. Probably not. He was probably a musician. Not. He was a he musician was... from the Beatles, you know. He was... Probably don't even know the Beatles. Probably don't know who the Beatles are, yeah. And George Carlin was, um, he was a piece of work. He was a, an infamous um, comedian, but he did everything right on the edge and usually got himself in trouble years ago. Now the stuff he says, probably He's nobody will even raise their eyebrows at. But anyway, um, he said, uh, what was the best thing before sliced bread? See, that's the... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the best thing. Our, that's our parents used to yeah, say, our parents well, used to say bread that. And sliced bread. Yeah. Because when they grew up, they didn't have sliced bread. I know. They didn't. And speaking of that, this was the for the year 1908. Thanks for that introduction. Appreciate that. Segue. Yes. Um, in 1908, marijuana, heroin, and morphine were all avail available over the counter at your local drugstore. Hmm. Back then, pharmacists said uh, heroin clears the complexion, gives buoyancy to the mind, <laughs> regulates the stomach, uh, and is in fact a perfect guardian of health. Hmm. 18% of the households had at least one full-time servant uh, or domestic help. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Uh, there were about 23 reported murders in the entire USA in 1908. Because people didn't bother to report them back then. <laughs> probably it's probably true. <laughs> that is probably true. Yeah. They shot them and buried them. Yeah, that could be too. Yeah. And everybody just looked the other way. Uh, now, um, yeah, I, now I forward this uh, to someone else uh, without typing it myself. I send it to you and others like you in Canada and the USA and wherever possible in a matter of seconds. Try to imagine what it will be like in another 100 years. Heck, another 50 years. It's really pretty <laughs> staggering how fast our society is, is Everything changing. Everything changes. So. <coughs> changing. All right. Yep, nope. No bird soar too high if he soars with his own wings. Hmm. Hmm. We do not see nature with our eyes, but with our understandings and our hearts. Hmm. Kindness is, is the sunshine in which virtue grows. And I think I'm just going to end it with stupid jokes. Please. So. All right. Um, why did the dog say meow? He was trying to learn a second language. What's a cat's favorite song? Three blind mice. What do you get when you cross a dog and a dandelion? A cauliflower. Oh, no. Oh, I know, I know. Hey, I never said these were good. I said they're great. <laughs> Which game do cats like to play with mice? Catch. <laughs> All right. I'm done. You're done. You're just going to say thank you? Thank you. OK, you're welcome. All right. Uh... Yes? You want to go see if you can find that? OK. We'll do that later. But... OK, where did you have it last? 
I think it's either on my desk or somewhere, or somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, considering it went all the way home to get that, it's not here, right? It's not no. It's not in the bag. You didn't slip it in the bag. I don't okay. think so. Okay, we're bringing it. <clears throat> Let's start with the prayer. Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for this holiday. And thank you for letting us be here together, whether we're in person or online. Thank you for the blessings of this day. We ask that you bring us a sacred wonderment and the joy of this day. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. So <clears throat> I have stuff I want to share with you. Not sure. Not sure. I don't know. Um, I've had several different thoughts about today. <clears throat> first thing, first thing, let me just say that we tend to get God and Santa confused. <laughs> God is not Santa. Santa is not God. Oh, you found it. Yay. Um, and I think part of the, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> part of, part of what we get all confused about is that we, we get the coal part attached to God. That if we don't do just right, you know, you're gonna get a lump of coal in your stocking instead of a gift. And we forget that God's not like that. Certainly, God wants us to be accountable for our actions. Oh, microphone on. Yeah, it's on. Um, certainly, God wants us to be accountable for our actions, but there's always forgiveness available to us. And it's not a matter of you're going to get struck with a lightning bolt if you don't do it just right. Good gifts are always going to be there. Good gifts are there for us. A um, couple of things I want to share with you. I'm sure what Jesus said. Jesus said, Matthew 5, 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute, persecute you. That's bullying. You know, we got a lot of bullying in the world right now. It's sad. But we pray for those people because they just don't know love bitterness and hatred and and that contempt for another human being that comes from being treated with contempt so there's a lot of pain behind all of that so we we pray for those bullies in order that you may be sons of the father who is in heaven for he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous because some of us some of us get hung up and think if something bad happens we must have done something bad to deserve it. No, that's not how that works at all. Stuff happens. But being a follower, being, being someone who is walking in the light and walking a sacred path, that grants us the opportunity to step into the flow. How many people have ever had a best worst thing that ever happened to? You know, a really bad thing and it turned out to be awesome? Yeah, yeah. Because when we're walking in the, in the sacred path, when we're following the way, we find the good in everything. And the good will work out for us. So that was what Jesus had to say about it. That's what Jesus had to say about it. And as we look back on his birth, we can look back on here was this innocent child. Have you ever held a baby? It's so fun to hold a baby, and they're so open, and their faces are just, unless they've got a, a dirty diaper, they have the sweetest look on their faces, or they're hungry. They're so sweet. They're innocent. They're pure. And that's what Jesus was. His whole life, he was that way. I want to read to you. Um, I would. I'd like to read this to you. Get my pages straight. Uh, at Jesus' crucifixion, the centurion, he saw what was happened and he began praying, praising God, saying, certainly this man was innocent. 
I mean, here was a centurion. He'd probably crucified quite a few people in his time, so he knew what an innocent person was going to act like compared to somebody who was guilty. He said, certainly this man was innocent. Jesus was innocent his whole life. He brought that innocence through everything, everything. And people said, well, he lost his temper when he drove the, the cattle and the, the, the money changers away. No, he didn't. He sat down and he made a cord of leather so that he could herd the cattle off. You can't do that in a rage. Have you ever seen somebody who was not having it anymore, not going to put up with the cruelty anymore, but they were in control? Martin Luther King. Got stuff done. You don't get in the way of somebody who's determined but not uh, losing control. He never lost control. I, th I think that story is really funny because what happened to the, when he turned the tables over and the money went everywhere? Guess what? There had been cattle all over the, the courtyard there. The money went in the poop. So whoever cleaned it up had to, whoever went to get the money had to clean up. So the, so the courtyard got clean, in other words. I thought that's hilarious. I think Jesus thought that was hilarious too. So all that to say, it's a time of innocence. It's a time of reclaiming our innocence. It's a time of recognizing that we can have that innocent state of being again. I don't care what you did. Jesus doesn't care what you did. Get clear. You don't have to carry any of that stuff. That's not your job. Give it up. Let it go. There's no shame anymore. There's no blame anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Return to that state of innocence and that childlike wonder. I think that's why we enjoy the presents so much because they wrap their secrets. And then when we open them, it's like, oh gosh, look at that. Sometimes we're disappointed, sometimes we're not. It's, it's this big surprise. We love that sort of thing because we can tap into that childlike wonder in those moments. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's what Merry Christmas is about. When I say Merry Christmas to someone, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for that moment of childlike wonder, not that, oh, I gotta get all this done and I got the presents wrapped and cook this and clean that and, no. Let's have the childlike wonder again. Let's reclaim that innocence. Let's go back to that point of joy. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And it's about walking in that peacefulness where we're not concerned and we're not burdened, but we're open and we're clear. And it's from that place of being open and clear that we can interact in an open and clear way with one another. And we don't have to say harsh things to one another. And when someone says harsh things to us, we can just <coughs> acknowledge that, oh, cruelty begets cruelty. Somebody must have treated that person with a lot of hurt. And we can pray for them and let it go. So let's do a guided meditation. <clears throat> Fastest service on earth. <clears throat> so let's just relax a little bit, take a moment, take a deep breath in. Yes, if you want to dim the lights, thank you, sir. Ah, <sighs> just be here. Be here in this moment. This moment is sacred. This moment is blessed. This is your moment to get clear, reclaim that innocence, I'm sorry, Phil forgot his coffee. <laughs> it's hard for me to be quiet. Yeah, it is hard for you to be quiet. What a goof. We love him. Let's take a deep breath in and bring your attention into your heart space, that whole area of your chest. Just a gentle breath in, a gentle exhale. Just be here. Be present in your own body, in your own life, in this moment. And now draw your attention to the bottoms of your feet. There are energy portals at the bottoms of your feet, and they open when you bring your attention there. 
And with that opening, this is a two-way portal, so you can draw up into your body grounded energy, strength from the earth. Just sort of bring that in and bring it into your heart space. In the meantime, you can also discharge any negative energy, any sorrows, any disappointments, any anger, any frustration, any negative feelings, any pain. If you have pain in your body, just let it drain out the bottoms of your feet. It takes more effort to hold on to that stuff than it does to let it go. So let it go. Be free. Be clear. So drawing in that beautiful energy from the earth and releasing negativity out of your body, just letting it fall into the earth. Mother Earth will receive that and transform that just into energy. It's just energy. And now bring your attention to the top of your head. There's an energy portal there. This is your divine connection point. It's always open. You're always connected. You're always within the sacred space of divine source. And there are energy portals above your head, many of them. See which one is the one right for you to tap into today. Maybe it's the, the white portal or the golden portal or a red one or a green one, or blue one, purple. Maybe it's copper colored, or maybe it's iridescent. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you today. As you tap into that, this portal opens further and allows that specific color or energy to flow in to the top of your head. This is divine energy, this living light of love. You have a right to receive that. Let that touch your mind. So where there might be fear, this pushes it away and the fear falls out the bottoms of your feet. Where there might be frustration, this energy pushes it away and it just falls out the bottoms of your feet. Bringing more and more of this living light of love and it's bringing to you a sense of peace, a sense of connectedness, a sense of love and harmony, and a sense of your own innocence, again, to reclaim. Let this touch your third eye, which is how you perceive your world. And right above your eyebrows is a discernment centers. Let it touch there, how you can discern What's right and wrong, good and bad? What's right for you? What's not right for you? And then the back of your head, that's where your occipital lobes are. This is part of that energy circuit. And this balances out how you perceive yourself and how you perceive your world. Who are you really? You're an innocent child of light. That's who you are really. And now bring that energy into your eyes as well. And then bring it into your ears and your jaw and your throat, your mouth. This is your true circuit. This allows you the ability to speak your truth. Speaking your truth with grace it doesn't have to be hurtful. It can be very kind and very clear. At the same time, other people may speak their truth and it's not your truth. It doesn't, you don't have to do anything about that. Just speak your truth if you can. Bringing more and more of this living light of love, bring it into your shoulders. Oh, we carry a ton of stress in our shoulders, don't we? Roll your shoulders, let, let that just relax and loosen. More and more love and light into your heart space and from your heart space to every part of your body, every part of your body, into your torso, into every organ, every system, every tissue, every fiber, every cell, even down into the cells, even down into your DNA, clearing and harmonizing and blessing you. Let that living light of love flow through you, through your legs and out the bottoms of your feet now anchoring it into this physical world. This world is full of hurt and sorrow and pain. 
It needs this love right now, does it not? How beautiful for you to be a conduit of this love. How kind of you. How compassionate of you. And now gently, gently, gently close the bottoms of your feet. And we're going to take a little journey in our imagination. Allow yourself to move through time and space. And find yourself on the hill where the shepherds were watching their sheep. And the angels come and start singing. And how surprised they were. Probably scared to death at first. Till the angels told them not to be afraid. And then the angels told them to go look for the baby Jesus. And we'll follow those shepherds as they go down into town, past the inn, back into the stable. And there's that beautiful child, so innocent. He had a big destiny. And as you look at that child, and that child looks at you, you have a sense of your own destiny. You have a big destiny. A destiny to be wise. A destiny to be kind. A destiny to be abundant. A destiny to find worthy work. Which is anything you put your hands to that your heart wants to do. And as you step away from that child, you see that there are three wise men nearby. And they've brought gifts to the baby. And they've brought you a gift. What gift are you given? Maybe it's a word or a thought or a feeling. Maybe it's a symbolic object. Open that gift. See what you receive. Whatever symbolic object you receive is what is right for you in this moment. And you can receive it with deep gratitude. Taking one last look at baby Jesus, sending him your love, feeling that deep connection with that innocence, Allow yourself to find your way back into this time and space, back into the here and now, back into your body, fully refreshed, fully recharged, and opening your eyes as you feel comfortable to do so. I want to stretch just a bit. Mr. Phil, if you want to join me for communion, and then we'll do our next thing. He's jingling all the way. Where's the um, quartet? Behind us. Oh, because Taylor's on mine. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. Can we your see? Poinsettia. see? Can the you point, see poinsettia in the back there? Well, Thank you so much. It was a gift. My sister is online. Oh. Hi, Lori. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I don't remember ever seeing her before. Oh, she's been there. I know, but she hasn't signed in. So. Oh, OK. Join us in prayer, please. <clears throat> Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, we remember Jesus. We remember his innocence. Remember his power. We remember his love. And we ask you to bring that into our hearts and help us to fulfill our own destiny in the light of that love. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. Your heart. Got yours, you can't get mine. in prayer again please loving spirit of light as we drink this in help us to drink in joy help us to drink in life all aspects of life 
Grant us peace and patience and love and joy. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Christmas comes but once a year. Okay, do your thing. I don't think we need two. No, I don't think we need two. <laughs> we got, uh, oh, here I got. Hello. Hello? It's on. Barely. No, it's not. I can hear you from it. I can hear you fine. It's not turned up. I'll be in. Sniffing. (laughs) Oh, here. Don't mind me. Uh, We got, what, I think $47 this week from Amazon. So (laughs) thank you, everybody. That's for anybody that does uh, Amazon Smile. And I know when it. That's what it is, because you get it every quarter. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, because about, I think it's a half a percent. Um, is donated to the church. Um, if you've got Amazon Smile and you've got uh, the church signed up for that. So that's always appreciated. And what else? Just all kinds of stuff. So we do have a gift for everybody um, for Christmas. Do you want to do those here in a minute? In a minute. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Here. There you go. What the heck? <laughs> Enough said, right? Enough said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have a question about your guided meditation? Oops, get my hand out of the camera there. My thing was stardust. Stardust. Oh, how beautiful is that? Well, um, that's magical energy to go and do whatever you want to do. That's freedom. Woohoo! I do anyway. You do anyway, <laughs> yes. So it's blessed. Now it's blessed. Anybody else have a question about your guided meditation? What gift did you receive? I got a golden. A golden ball. Just, was, just came in for me. Awesome. So this golden light, I've been talking about that a little bit over the last uh, few weeks, is this golden energy is like a, we're getting a higher level of energy than we have been. Um, it's like this whole new level uh, of divine connection is being gifted to us. So it's used for healing. It's used for, excuse me, for strength. Uh, and it used for clarity. So when you're, are you in a place where you're needing to make some decisions here soon? Uh, I just feel like I'm more like evolving um, spiritually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're ramping you up. Yeah. Whole nother level. Whole nother level. Yes. So I saw everything in like really vibrant shades of purple and blue, kind of like an aurora borealis, but really brilliant just purple. Does that mean anything? Purple is uh, divine connection. So this, this is acknowledging to you that you are connected and that divine source is all around and the magnificence of it is there. What gift did you receive? It was, I, when she said stardust, it kind of sounded familiar, but for me, what I found, it felt is that I just got um, like cosmic energy, like universal energy, kind of like the soup that everything came from. It was just a swirling, like it wasn't any specific thing. So, so, you, so this is like that creation energy. So uh, this gives you the ability to be more creative. It gives you the ability to create the life that you're seeking. Beautiful. Beautiful. And if anybody has any questions or too shy to ask me out loud, you can, you can do that. Okay, Mr. Phil, you want to um, do our Christmas blessing here, honey? Yes, yes ma'am. My daughter wanted to share what her gift. What did you get, Lily? You had got a necklace and it had energy inside of it. I'm repeating for the, for the camera. Um, so this is about your throat, about being able to receive energy um, and be energized on this higher level. So how cool is that? What? I'm just uh, seeing. This Terry, Terry said you got a gold portal. A gold Same portal? As, mm-hmm. Okay. Good. So how long was your necklace? Did it come down to here or was it at your throat? It came all the way down here. All right. So your heart is going to be the place where you're going to receive or feel most of this energy. Does that make sense to you? Are you a pretty sensitive person anyway? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So do you think that you're kind of an empath? If I stub my toe, do you feel it? Yeah. Do you go, oh? I probably would, yeah. Yeah. So that's an empath. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna gentle that empathic energy down so that you don't feel the pain in the world so much, but you're gonna still have the compassion and the connection for other people. So your empathy is gonna, gonna be stronger, but not, as, not making you as sensitive. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, so a golden be, portal. Being, being an empath at your age can be challenging. Mm -hmm. so. I have some tools for you. So we'll talk after church. Um, <clears throat> I need to give you that tool right now. <laughs> so rub your hands together really, really fast. And put them on the pew in front of you. Just put them on the wood in front of you. Yeah, your palms, are good. And what happens is you, that discharges anything. So if you pick up, like I can go to the grocery store and pick up somebody walking past, I get their energy. By doing that, I call this a psychic flush, this discharges that energy instantly. And it's, then you're clear, and you just have your own energy. Does that make sense? So when you feel like you've picked something up, you can do this. And you don't have to hang on very long. Just, it's, it's, have you ever shoveled across the floor and zapped your brother with electricity? Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing, only you're just discharging it into, into anything inanimate. Okay? That, that's one, t one technique that'll help you a lot. Just one. Um, Scott said, uh, place of recreation uh, with his name on it. Oh, there you go. Time to have some fun. Time to have some fun. Who, uh, she had the golden portal. Again, it's that golden energy. Receive Sorry. that golden energy. Golden Golf Club, Marianne McDonald. Yeah. yeah. Golden Golf Club. And, uh, Take a swing. Hmm. Why can't this? Here we go. You're on the wrong spot. Here we go. Gold portal. You got it. I know. So, the golf club. Do you golf? I don't know if she golfs or not. Um, but it's about taking a swing and, and hitting the goal. It's about getting the goal. So whatever your goal has been, take a swing. Now's the time you'll be blessed in that. Okay? Um, okay. I think that's it. The box behind you, please. On oh. the floor. We can do the... And we're doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I think everybody gets to have one of each. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> we, I uh, got a uh, flashlight from Olight, one of the kind of major brand, brand man, uh, manufacturers. Um, I was so pleased all of the thank yous that I got in this package. I mean, all kinds of different ways to say thank you. So we took one of their thank you Christmas prayers and made a bunch of changes to it and came up with this for Christmas. Christmas. So go ahead and start. Yes. Um, we would like to wish you all a heartfelt thank you for being a part of the Divine Fellowship. And online as well. And online. Although we come from different ideas spiritually, a common pursuit of light magnetized us together and illuminates our sacred journey. We honor your sacred path and wish you a bright tomorrow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And why don't we just let them, we have gifts we wanted to give. So there's a star, there's an ornament. This one says, live Christmas every day. I didn't see one that said, um, is it too late to be good? <laughs> Joy. And praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. That one. So everyone here, um, just take one of each. And I'll just leave those back there. I'm making a mess. Since we are obviously we we're prepared for more people. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. So we'll do that uh, after services. Let's do an energy circle for the folks uh -huh. online. Oh, we're going to do this afterwards? Mm hmm. Okay. And that way people can rummage, rummage through. Okay. So let's rub our hands together really fast. You're still connected into that glowing light. Bring it into your heart space, from your right hand to your left hand. I'm sorry. Am I going the right way? Left hand to right hand, right hand back to your heart space. I have to do it backwards because the people online see it different. Um, this can 
connects an energy circuit. And as that energy circuit connects, you'll feel energy building between your hands. You might even want to move your hands fairly close together. You can really feel that energy building. This is divine light. It's not your energy. It's divine energy. And it's here for you. Bring that into your heart space. Have a merry, merry Christmas. And we will see you next week. God bless. Yay. Mr. Phil, have you got a close?